Good evening, folks. Thank you for joining me tonight. This is Bill Breeden. Welcome to Constellation Tour number 67. Tonight we're going to go over the Southern Celestial Hemisphere constellation known as Centaurus or the Centaur. Centaurus is best viewed from the um, Southern Hemisphere of Earth. So we've moved our observing location down to Buenos Aires, Argentina, so that we can see the whole constellation. So the sky will be a little unfamiliar if you're from northern latitudes, but bear with me. It's not that it's not going to be that difficult. The Centaur or Centaurus is best viewed from April to June each year. And as I said, from a southern uh, latitude location. So we have Stellarium set up for April the 11th, 2021, at about 9 p.m. No, huh, let me look at that again. It's set up for closer to 11 p.m. So how do we go about finding Centaurus? And if, if you live in northern latitudes, you can really only see the very the very northern tip of the of the constellation and you really can't see any of the stars in it very easily so i'm going to show you how to find it if you're at a southern location so we're in buenos aires and we're looking south and we're in a moderately light polluted suburb so let's look high up in the sky in the south and two of the signposts of the spring sky from the south are going to be Crux or the Southern Cross right here. And these two stars here, Alpha and Beta Centauri. And those two, those two groups of stars are also used to point your way to the uh, South Celestial Pole. Um, folks that live in the Southern Hemisphere, they don't have the benefit of a North Star as bright as Polaris like we have up north. So in order to find the point on the sky that represents the South Celestial Pole, um, folks will use these two constellations here, um, Crux and Alpha and Beta Centauri in the constellation Centaurus. And what you do is you draw a line from these two stars in crux and just keep it going. And then you also draw a line between Alpha and Beta Centauri and draw a line perpendicular to that. And you have to use your imagination here. So you draw a line perpendicular to these. And if you remember the line that you drew from these two stars and you follow it down, you have to imagine in your mind the point at which those two lines intersect. And this area right here would be the approximate location of the South Celestial Pole around which the southern sky turns. So a little bit of celestial navigation for our southern friends. So anyway, back to finding Centaurus. Um, again, here's Crux, the, cro the Southern Cross. And these two stars here are Alpha and Beta Centauri. So if you find these two stars, you have found part of Centaurus. Now Centaurus is a large constellation and it extends from these two stars to up the area above the Southern Cross. So up into this area and all around in here. So you have to take these two stars into consideration and then this whole area above the Southern Cross. This is all Centaurus. So let's draw our constellation lines. And you'll see that Centaurus is depicted here with a line between Alpha and Beta Centauri. And then a few other stars here that, that kind of go around and above the Southern Cross. And they even extend over this way a bit. So let's turn on our boundaries. And you can see that Centaurus itself is a massive constellation. All of this here, including Alpha and um, Beta Centauri. 
So there's a few interesting facts about Centaurus. One of them is that most people have heard of the star Alpha Centauri. And because it's used in science fiction a lot, um, Alpha Centauri is one of the closest stars to us. Um, it's located just 4.4 light years from Earth, which means that the light that you're seeing coming from Alpha Centauri um, left that star just 4.4 uh, years ago. That makes it one of the, the sky's closest stars. Um, in fact, there's, a, there's an even fainter star known as Proxima Centauri that's just a little bit closer to us. And that has the distinction of being the closest star to the Earth, other than the Sun. So Beta Centauri, um, on the other hand, is 525 light years from Earth. So even though Alpha and Beta look about the same brightness, um, Alpha is just four light years away, where Beta is 525 light years away. So they just appear about the same brightness and they appear close to each other in the sky. But um, Beta is much, much further away from us than, than Alpha is. So um, let's travel to a darker location since we're here at a at a southern location. Let's let's go ahead and venture out to a dark site. Now the southern sky must be amazing to see in reality. I've never been down there. It's on my bucket list. I may never get to it. So let's try to find Centaurus again. Um, this time from a dark location. Um, I'm looking south, and you want to look for the distinct Southern Cross, and then near it you'll find Alpha and Beta Centauri. And just look, look at the area just above the cross, and all around here down to Alpha and Beta Centauri, and you have found the constellation Centaurus. And from a dark site, you'll also see this spot here that looks like another star and it looks so much like a star that it's actually it actually has a bare name um omega centauri i mean it's named the way the other stars are named you have alpha centauri you have beta centauri you have gamma centauri delta centauri and finally you have let's see if i can find it here Like I said, it's hard to make Stellarium actually select what you want. But this globular cluster here is known as Omega Centauri. And as you can see, it's not really a star at all. It's a globular cluster. It's a force stellarium to select it because pointing at it doesn't seem to work it keeps picking all these other stars so now you can see that it finally reads up here omega centauri cluster but the reason it's given a name that sounds like a star is because from a dark location when you're looking at the constellation centaurus it does just sort of look like another star so it has um, the greek letter associated with it the way a star would um, it's also known as NGC 5139, and it is a fifth magnitude globular cluster located 15,700 light years from Earth. So while we're here, let's take a look at it through the finder. I've seen Omega Centauri from northern latitudes. Um, unfortunately for us, it is right on the horizon, so it's you can see that it's large, but it doesn't appear very bright to us up here. It must be amazing to see from a southern location. So I'm simulating here the view of Omega Centauri through my lowest power, widest angle eyepiece, and that is a 24 millimeter panoptic. And you can see that Omega Centauri just fills the field of view completely with stars spectacular
here's a view of it, uh, a simulation of it through um, 15 by 70 binoculars. And if you wanted to put more power on it, you get you begin to resolve stars into the core. Here's a view of Omega Centauri through a 13 millimeter Nagler eyepiece, which has an apparent field of view of 82 degrees, giving you an actual field of view of just over half a degree of sky. And you can see that Omega Centauri at, at this level fills the entire field of view with stars. Absolutely amazing. So now I've returned to a naked eye view of the sky. And let's review how to find Centaurus again. Look for the Southern Cross and look for these two bright stars near it. That's Alpha and Beta Centauri. And then look at the region just above the Southern Cross. And this whole area of sky is Centaurus. Let's look at the mythical figures. And you can see here, here's the Southern Cross right here underneath the centaur, um, which is half person, half horse, a mythological figure um, carrying what looks like a spear. Very large constellation. Okay, I have... Um, there are no Messier objects within Centaurus, but there are several interesting deep sky objects um, other than the spectacular Omega Centauri cluster. Um, NGC 3918, um, also known as the Blue Planetary. So let's use our, let's pull out our go-to scope and look for NGC 3918. And does show up here in Stellarium, which is always nice. Uh, it's magnitude 8, and you can see it's just located over here to the right of the Southern Cross. And through a finder scope, planetary nebula um, um, oftentimes will look stellar. Um, they're so small and compact that until you put a lot of power on them, they just look like another star. So let's have a look through an eyepiece here. Let's put more power on it than that. So even through my nine millimeter delight eyepiece, the simulation here keeps it looking like a star. Uh, it's located 5,300 light years away. Let's manually zoom in on it and see if we can get any more power, any more detail. There we go. That's about as far in as I would go just to simulate realistically what it's going to look like through a telescope. It probably won't look this clear, but you should be able to resolve it into a planetary nebula. NGC 3918, the blue planetary. Okay, um, I have a galaxy on my list also, NGC 5128. And this is a seventh magnitude galaxy located 15.9 million light years away. So through the finder scope, this is actually a, a large object. Stellarium shows it as being nearly half a degree across, and you can see here by this inner circle, um, the Telrad, that's how a Telrad represents half a degree of sky, and this galaxy nearly fills it, so that is very large. It looks like it's in pretty close proximity to Omega Centauri. Let's go with a little more power. There we go. NGC 5128 is also known as Centaurus A, or the Hamburger Galaxy, and it's also included on the Caldwell list as Caldwell 77. Okay. 
very nice object. So this concludes my tour of Centaurus the Centaur. Thank you for joining me tonight. Good night and good seeing.